KISW. Chris Hardwick. Yes, BJ. Looks like they're saying that J.J. Abrams actually is going to be directing Star Wars. So that is Star confirmed. That's, we, the, uh, the sources say that, in fact, now my sources, I have no idea. It was it's all over the internet paper. yesterday. Though. All I over saw the internet. I, I, I did see all the yeah. rumors. Because he had said that he was going to just be a paying customer. He loves Star Wars that much. I thought it was going to be Matthew Vaughn. Like, the rumors were Matthew yeah. Vaughn, the guy yeah. who did X-Men First Class, that, 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 it, that he was going to direct Star Wars. But it looks JJ, like it's J.J. Oh, he could piss off all the Star Wars and the Star Trek fans if he <laughs> cast Chris Pine as Luke's Skywalker. That, that would, would be, be badass. That would be so funny. That would fit. actually that would be awesome. Well, there was a you know there was there was this joke. John thing. Cho is Darth Vader. <laughs> there, there was this there was this jokey thing online initially when Disney acquired uh, when Disney bought Lucasfilm that was like you know the next episode and it was like Zac Efron as Han Solo and Selena Gomez. Is a, is a, but actually, I think Disney's going to do a. I think Disney will do a good job. You know, with with the franchise. Yeah, we, we, we on our podcast we were talking to an, a comic book editor, he thought the same thing. He said, look, he goes, I have kids now. He goes, I really don't know much about Disney, but then I got kids, and you, then you're forced to enter the world yeah. of Disney. And he said, you know what? Those guys do a good job. Well, look what they did. <laughs> you know, they did this with Marvel. They did stuff with the Avengers. They did They did a good Muppet reboot. They did, uh, you know, you need a company the size of Disney that can handle something the size of Lucasfilm. And they're already integrated into the parks. And so I think it's I think it's actually going to be pretty cool. So now the, the reason I ask you is, um, you know, I, it's funny because I feel like, and I, I, I told you, uh, uh, you know, outside that I feel like the elder statesman, because you and Kevin Smith, you know, you guys are from a particular, you guys think you're the older generation of sci-fi geekdom. But no. But then here I am, like Peter Ustinov at the end of Logan's Run, you know what I mean? Are those cracks on your face? What, what is that? I, even to you guys, I look like that. And so... Uh, we all would have been... Re- <laughs> none of us would have been renewed by this point. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I'm the guy that really can go, okay, I was 17 when I was blown away by Star Wars for the first time. Uh, and, uh, you know, but you guys were, you guys were, you know, young kids still loving it as well. What do you feel about what JJ did to Star Trek? I loved it, and I was watching Star Trek when it was on for li- when it was on live. I loved it. I'm excited that JJ could be involved in this along with Disney. Well, I really like JJ. Again, you know, we had him on the podcast a while ago. Um, he he said some things that I think, you know, some diehard Star Trek fans might have been uh, a little like what? Which was he never really emotionally connected with the original Star Trek, which is why he d- had the take on it that he did. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was kind of a genius. I know JJ loves the. T- Time stream thing, but I thought it was a really genius thing to just sort of, re, you know, like kind of reset it to freshen it up after yeah. all, after all these decades. So I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm looking forward to. I think there's a Star Wars movie that fans have been waiting to get, and maybe this, you know, maybe this will be it, and maybe or maybe it'll be previously on Star Wars. <laughs> You'll just see like the letters floating. I don't know, but I but I like JJ, and I and I think uh, I think you know he could probably do a really good job with it. And uh, I saw somebody joking because you know JJ was a part of Lost, and in one of the episodes of Lost, Hurley was talking about how he rewrote the the, the Star Wars, and they're like. I wonder if they're going to use Hartley's script. Oh, oh my God, that's hilarious! And yeah. just in true Lost fashion, that's that is like a nugget from an old episode right. that like applies to something that's happening now. It's it's, it's Lost. Everything's coming full circle. Oh my God, did we all die? Is this a sideways universe? <laughs> now I want to uh, uh, this and this is a fascinating thing since of course now Disney does have Star Wars and this just came out and I'm gonna and Vicky if you'll give this to Chris to look at while we're talking about this, but. This is bizarre, but people are wondering, did George Lucas put a Mickey Mouse head in The Empire Strikes Back? And the scene where Luke gets blown up the window. (laughs) 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 Yeah, no, George Lucas was a big Dead Mouse fan before. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, <laughs> it, uh, but the it, you, the he scene loves where that Lu- dance music, the Love scene it. where Luke gets blown out the window uh, in Empire Strikes Back, I think that's Luke, right, getting blown out the window right before, you know, right after he loses his hand. Yeah, yeah this the, the looks. I mean, it, I, I think it's possible. Like they would do stuff like this all the time. You know, like they would they would put little things. You know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you who I could ask. How ironic is? I mean, or, or I don't know if ironic is the right word, but how coincidental is the? Yeah. He puts Mickey Mouse's head in Star Wars, and now here it is, all these years later, it's part of the Mickey Mouse world. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you, my um, my girlfriend's dad is a special effects guy named John Dykstra, and John oh, did. Oh, she's John Dykstra's. The yeah. man. You're you're dating John Dykstra's kid. I am. Damn, you have just you have just elevated his, nerd power. John Dykstra's the man. She's perhaps his greatest special effect of all, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Here is a rose. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> uh, I, by the way, I hate you so much. I, know, Chris I, know, I hate me too. Hate you on every level. I really hate me too. <laughs> but uh, she. So uh, John, I'll ask John if he. I mean, he only worked on on the first movie. He only worked. But on, he might know a guy. But he might know. But but he, this is going to drive you crazy. For Valentine's Day last year, Chloe gives me this bag, and it's got two T-shirts in it. One of them is an original Star Wars crew T-shirt with oh. a design that I had never seen before. Wow. It was a Ralph McQuarrie design. It was kind of before they really knew what the movie was. So it's like a young guy holding up what is looks more like a laser sword than a lightsaber. And then uh, and then for Christmas this past year, John gave me a, a three by three piece of the original Death Star. <laughs> no. It's, it was, okay, so that's pretty can, badass. Can we just pause yes. for a second? Yes. I just want to pause for a yes. moment because sometimes uh, you know, sometimes and, 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 and we've had the same kind of conversation with Simon Pegg because he has to pause for a moment when he's on the set of Star Trek. Because he was, he's such a huge geek. Sure. So you, do you sit back at some point, go back to the seven-year-old Chris Hardwick and go, "Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I my Christmas gift is a piece of the Death Star. Yeah. And That's then seven-year-old insane. me is like, "Who are you and why are you yelling at me? Yeah. <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> Who is this creepy older man yelling at me, holding a chunk of foam? Uh, and you know, you talk a lot about tech too. And of course, you know, you're the king. I mean, you're one of the kings of Twitter at Nerdist, where you can find him. And I don't, I don't know if you know this, and I want to get your take on it. But uh, Twitter just announced they're going to have a new service that lets you add six-second videos to your tweets. I'm so afraid it's going down the road of MySpace, where you know, you, you know, you, someone always had that annoying dancing, whatever. Every time you load up your MySpace page, it's possible. But but the one thing that uh, Twitter has over the you know other social networks is that if you don't want to see that stuff, you can just unfollow people. That's a good <laughs> yeah. point. I mean, like they can't force you to see anything that you don't want to see and and it's funny you know it's it's funny how dated you know my special the comedy special i taped last february and it aired in november and i had this whole bit about myspace where mm-hmm. i was like oh i still have a myspace page but i haven't been there in so long and i went back and now it's like robocops detroit <laughs> like all the windows are broken down that's awesome and, uh, you know and and of course myspace just rebooted like a couple you know maybe a yeah. couple of weeks ago it's like more music centric, right yeah, yeah, JT, they, they, you, knew, Timberlake you knew song. when he bought that he was gonna do something he was gonna make it sexy so I went back and I I, I kind of like reactivated my account, but I haven't really. I'm still very yeah. tentative about it. I couldn't remember my password, and I couldn't remember which email I used to log into MySpace in the first place. So I was just like, <laughs> I guess I gotta start over I again. I don't know. <laughs> I know. It, and 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 do you want to be like? I I feel like people are gonna make fun of me. For going back to MySpace, I know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, my kids because my kids already make fun of me just for, you know, and I always thought I was always on the cutting edge of tech. And I said I'm never going to be my father with a blinking twelve on the VCR. Yeah. And I and my kids are looking at me like that's exactly who I am. Here's the you will get this reference more than anyone else. This I think this is probably what it's like if you're older and you have kids and you think you're being cool. It's like in the Overlook Hotel when Torrent Jack Torrance goes in the room, hooks up with the hot girl from the bathtub, and then pulls away, and she's a creepy old lady that's yeah. all cut up. Like that's the reality of what yeah. you think you're being. Yeah. It's you're right, man. I, I, it's it's a little sadness right there. Well, uh, Chris, first of all, thank you so much for getting up early because, I mean, it's opposite your schedule. You've always been very kind to us uh, on the show, off the show, and everything, and I'm so stoked for, you know, uh, everywhere I see you, it's like a big woohoo. Oh, thanks, uh, man. Because I remember we had early Twitter conversations, and I don't even think we had met. You were just a guy that loved Doctor Who, mm-hmm. and I had commented on Doctor Who, and you tweeted and said, hey, man, you just out of the blue said, hey, I just started watching the show, Doctor Who rocks yeah and i'm like chris hardwick who's this chris i mean because I, like, I didn't even talk to you and you were just like such a fan to go i just want to be part of this conversation because I, I love, love doctor who so much yeah. and then to see you hosting the specials on the bbc Amer- <laughs> is america fun. it's so great because you love it love and it. you're involved with it and i love seeing people like that do that so well, c- thanks, congratulations man. to you bj shea morning experience on 99.9 kisw